if someone ever has been beaten up because they're gay, I would, I feel like I have a little insight on that where I could be helpful as if I didn't before. I was walking down the street and I got attacked by a couple guys. I got a couple punches to my face and punches in my stomach. And, uh, you know, they uh, certainly weren't saying nice things to me while they were hitting me. I remember it being warm outside. It was the beginning of the fall when it happened. Usually when I went to Pearl's back then, I went by myself. I would get off work at like, 10 o'clock at night and I'd be a little wound up. So I go and play a game of pool and then I go home. After I left the bar, I was just walking past the post office on Elmwood. And um, after the post office, uh, there aren't very many lights that were on. I don't know if there were lights out <laughs> or what, but it was a little dark and then they kind of just jumped out of the side of the like there was a driveway right there. I was freaking out when it was happening. I didn't really quite know what was going on and I was really just not thinking clearly at that point. And I just remember thinking to myself, you need to get out of here. What are you gonna do to take care of yourself? I think one of the problems in our society is victims are often blamed for what happens to them. You know, people might say, well, why was she walking alone at night, you know, outside a bar or something like that. Um, and that's one thing that we really need to stop doing. You know, it is always the perpetrator's responsibility. I just had this awful thing happen to me. I'm going to just deal with it and I'll be fine. And. Uh, I just was thankful that I wasn't hurt. I just, my face just didn't look that great. You know, victims often really minimize what happens to them. I think that's another thing. Um, you know, oh, it's not so bad. It wasn't that bad. Um, and when in fact, any, any act of violence is, should be taken seriously, that she didn't deserve for that to happen to her. Um, and it certainly was nothing that she did to deserve that. I mean, I didn't need to go to the hospital or anything. I wasn't bleeding. I just had um, uh, like two black eyes and a fat lip. I was affected in a few different ways by this. I won't ever walk down a street that is, it doesn't have lights on it. I feel like I have my guard up. And I, um, I haven't really had nightmares lately, which is nice. If what happened to me happened to someone else just recently or tomorrow, I, uh, I wouldn't tell them anything. I would just be supportive as best I could because I feel like that's what people really need. I would listen. I feel like I'm a good listener. And, you know, that's what people need most when something tragic happens to them. It's just someone to listen to them. And then when they're ready to go and deal with it, you know, whether it be the police or talking to someone else, you know, just being supportive. Hi, this is Anne at Safe Space. Safe Space is a social change and social service program working to end physical, sexual, and emotional violence in the lives of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning Vermonters. 
and we do that through um, direct services and advocacy work. We have a support line where we support survivors um, all over the state. It's a toll-free line where advocates um, help, help out there. And we do a lot of outreach and education in the community as well. One of the most important things that we ask people to do is just to help bring visibility to the issues that lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people in Vermont are facing. Um, and there is discrimination and there is abuse and violence and the only way that that's going to end is for people to get involved. Awareness is the biggest thing, I think, because if people are aware that, you know, this happened, it's real, um, they're more apt to get involved and, you know, be part of finding a solution in ways to not have this happen again. There are so many people like Liz out there whose stories need to be heard. We need to know that this happens, even in Vermont, where people think it is so safe and so gay-friendly. Um, but even here, there are these incidents of discrimination and of hate um, and violence. And if Safe Space wasn't here talking about that and doing the education about it and supporting survivors, um, there, there would continue to be, like there is in many places and still are here, these gaps and these um, victims who are suffering in silence and just a real lack of awareness in the broader community that this is an issue that people need to pay attention to. I have two big goals that I'd like to have up and running in the next year. I definitely want my workshop to be one of my main jobs, which would be really great because I love making things and people actually like to buy the stuff that I make, which is it's a bonus. And then I also really want to start a farm. I want to uh, have either down at the Intervale, have vegetables, um, do a couple CSAs, just be a farmer, and uh, maybe eventually get a chunk of land somewhere and then get some farm animals. A really powerful thing is just to talk to other people about it, talk to your friends and family. Ask your business if you know maybe Safe Space could come in and talk to your staff and do a training. So just helping to spread that education is something that people can do. And and you know we're also a small nonprofit here, so anything that people can help out in terms of volunteering, donating time, money, we always need that. We're always um, wanting to do more and reach a lot more people, but we need the community support and help to do that.